forward because God has made all things new. Oh, yeah. What a moment you have brought me to such a freedom. The Arkansas Conference is worshiping together today all around the state. Welcome. As we prepare to begin a new year, this service is so special because we have people participating literally from around the state. And like many of you are doing most Sundays, we're taking video and editing and putting it together. Today, I am standing here in Haven United Methodist Church in Hot Springs, and I'm grateful to the congregation and also to Pastor Mama Peaches Smith, who is serving faithfully 
and creatively here as pastor. She will be praying for you in a few minutes. But now, let us worship the Lord together. Let us pray. Most gracious and heavenly Father, God, we thank you for another day. We thank you for all that you've done. God, we thank you for always being with us. You promised that you would never forsake us and that you would not leave us. And for that promise, I am so grateful. This year of 2020 has presented so many challenges to us. We've been inundated with the virus of COVID-19, the virus of racism, the virus of food insecurities, so many viruses. But God, you've been right there with us. And for that, I say thank you. And as we end this year and begin a new year, oh God, I ask that we all start a new virus and that is the virus of spreading love. Let us love one another as Christ has loved the church in all that we do and all that we say. Let us be love in action. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. 
Our scripture today is found in the letter of Paul to the Corinthians, the second letter of Paul, chapter 5, verses 16 and 17. So then, from this point on, we won't recognize people by human standards. Even though we used to know Christ by human standards, that isn't how we know him now. So then, if anyone is in Christ, that person is part of the new creation. The old things have gone away, and look, new things have arrived. This is the word of God for the people of God, and thanks be to God. Over my left shoulder is the crozier. You'll notice it's in the shape of a, a shepherd's crook. It is the traditional symbol of a bishop, one who shepherds the flock. A shepherd cares for the flock and loves the flock. I want you to know, though, that I really have fallen in love with you during the past eight and a half years that I've been here. I fall in love with you because I've come to know you. And you are people who are worth loving. Well, at least most of you. I have fallen in love with you as I have seen your passion for Christ, your faithfulness and commitment. I have fallen in love with you as we have grown in our relationship as sisters and brothers in Christ. But I recently realized I've fallen more in love with you than I thought possible during these past 10 months. It's been an excruciatingly difficult time. So much pain and and heartache and struggle. The litany of all the things that have gone on is long 
and well known and etched in your hearts. So I don't have to repeat them. Any one of them would be difficult enough to deal with. But we found them stacked one on top of another, on top of another, on top of another. And it turns out to be like a giant tsunami wave on steroids in an infinity loop. I know you're struggling. Tired. Wondering when it's going to be over. Ready to get back to normal. Wondering if you can take any more of it. My God, no wonder you are desperately looking for new things. I've got some good news. That's exactly what God is doing. New things. Listen again to Paul's words that you heard read earlier. So then, from this point on, we won't recognize people by human standards, even though we used to know Christ by human standards. That isn't how we know him now. So then, if anyone is in Christ, that person is part of the new creation. The old things have gone away, and look, New things have arrived. There's no ifs, ands, or buts for Paul. There is a new creation. It's all around us right now. And you can be part of it. I know you can look around and you can see some new things. Food pantries that are popping up when the need is greatest. Water wells that are dug in Haiti. People who have been in addiction, finding new life and recovery. Individuals on death's doorstep, recovering from COVID. And when you see them, you know God is present and doing wonderful work, doing something new. But if you're honest, if I'm honest, when we look around, Most of life looks the same. And that gives us a conundrum we've got to figure out. On the one hand, we believe what Paul says. We're part of a new creation. The old is going away. The new has arrived. On the other hand, there's still so much pain and heartache and struggle and injustice. We find ourselves asking, how can I see new things when I've looked and don't see any new things? Paul gives a very simple answer about that. It's in Christ. What he says is that when anyone is in Christ, that's when the person is part of a new creation. He says when anyone's in Christ, that's when that person discovers the old things being swept away. He says when a person is in Christ, that's when that person sees new things all around. The key is Christ. The doorway to get to new things is Christ. And I want to share a reading with you from a United Methodist pastor named James Bryan Smith. He's a professor and author who has done a lot of work with Richard Foster and Dallas Willard. He talks about how you experience new things in Christ in his book, The Good and Beautiful Life. He says, We live at the mercy of our ideas and our narratives. What we think 
determines how we live. A little later, he says this, I discovered as I replaced my old false narratives with the narratives of Jesus, my life began to change in many ways. I fell in love with the God Jesus knows. I began to see myself as someone in whom Christ dwells, as sacred and valuable. I started to treat people differently as I entered the kingdom and learned that I really can pray for my enemies and bless those who curse me. Some of them even start cursing me. Smith shows what it means to be in Christ and a part of a new creation in real life. I know what he's talking about because I have experienced that as well. And there was a, a time when I was trapped by bad narratives, by horrible narratives, by narratives that controlled my life in ways that were not good for me or anyone else. I did not love myself very much. I did not think I was lovable. I wondered if I was good enough for anything. These narratives were so powerful. They had the ability to take good events and chew them up and spit them out. They even had the ability to take my faith in Christ and neutralize its ability to impact my life. But then I began to trust Jesus enough to walk out of those toxic narratives, to run to his embrace of grace, to be filled and healed and transformed enough to step out and start living his narrative of love, his narrative found in the Beatitudes, his narrative of discipleship. And when I did, the most amazing thing happened. I literally saw life in a new way. I saw others in a new way. I saw myself in a new way. I understood what mattered most in a new way, and I acted in a new way. So now, I live in real life, and I make plenty of mistakes. But I also know that in Christ, I experience being part of a new creation of seeing more and more of the bad being swept out and more and more of the new things God is doing all around me and I can participate in them. Dallas Willard tells a story about the Chicago Bears football team back in the 1980s. During that era, Mike Ditka was coach and one of the stars of the team, a, a true cult character, was a player named William the Refrigerator Perry. Perry was a massive man, a talented player. And in their championship run, they decided to put him in at running back one game. And, and they gave him the ball, and he ran all of the half yard left into the end zone for a touchdown. He became an instant legend. Now, I know some of you don't know what in the world I'm talking about because you weren't even born. So all I can say is go Google it. You'll become a fan of the fridge as well. One day at chapel before a game, the fridge was asked to lead the team in the Lord's Prayer. And for, for some reason, Dicka, the coach, leaned over to the chaplain and said, I'll bet you 20 bucks he doesn't know the Lord's Prayer. And the chaplain was surprised and, and didn't know what to do, so he said, okay, I'll take that bet. And the fridge walked up to the podium 
And he closed his eyes and bowed his head and say, Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And Dicka kind of started mumbling while he was saying this prayer and and pulled out his wallet, got out a 20 and, and handed it to the chaplain and said, I would have bet anything he didn't know the Lord's Prayer. The fridge thought he knew the Lord's Prayer, but he prayed the wrong prayer. And it's a powerful reminder And sometimes we think we're doing the right thing. We think we're in a relationship with Christ. We think we are doing the faithful thing that disciples are called to do. And yet we're doing the wrong thing and don't even know it. If you find yourself in a place right now where you are weary and overwhelmed, maybe cynical or angry all the time. Maybe you need to figure out if you're praying the right prayer. If you're looking ahead to the next few months and and all you can think about is let's just get things back to the way they were before, could you be praying the wrong prayer? If you think once COVID is over, I can get control of my life again the way I want. Think about whether you're praying the wrong prayer. What I mean by that is maybe you need to rethink your relationship with Christ. It's it's one thing to go to church, to talk about Jesus, to sing about Jesus, to participate in church activities. It's another thing to be in Christ, which means you realize you don't have all the answers. You figured out you can't do it on your own. You decide to trust his love to give yourself to Him. And step by step by step, to begin to live out His narrative. I believe with all my heart that in Christ you can experience being part of a new creation. I, I believe with all my heart that you can actually see the old things being swept away. I believe with all my heart that you can actually see new things popping up all around you. Because I believe in the power of Christ. We're about to begin a brand new year. And for many people, it'll be a year of continuing frustration and pain and anguish and uncertainty and maybe even burnout. But there is this amazing opportunity ahead of you. And that is to see God all around you right now, to experience joy and hope and God's justice right now to start thinking ahead with new and creative ideas about how life can be different for you, your church, your community, and to anticipate that life won't go back the way it was. It will be lived in God's kingdom on the other side of COVID. In Christ you get to be part of a new creation. In Christ, you get to see the old, the bad, the painful swept away. In Christ, you get to see God's new things. I pray 
that you find yourself in Christ and new things all around you. Pray with me. Lord, we give you thanks and we give you praise for what you have done in Jesus who came into the world and showed us what it means to live the Jesus way and to live a life of love and service and humility and passion and justice, to experience grace that accepts us just the way we are and invites us into a deeper relationship and then transforms us. So I pray that everyone who's hurting and everyone who's weary and everyone who's uncertain and everyone who feels they just can't do any more is so touched by your grace and just the way they need it, just the time they need it, just the place they need, that they will be ready to step out of the old life into Christ and into a new life. And I pray this in the strong, strong name of Jesus. Amen. As you go into the new year, as we move through the dark days of the surge, as we see vaccines being given, and we begin to move on the other side of COVID, look around and see the new things that God is inviting you to be part of. Amen.
Oh 